solution to the assignment um, from the last class. So we have let number one, then we have prompt, and then prompt takes two, um, two, two, um, in prompt syntax, prompt syntax takes two parameters. That is the first thing is a message. So you have message, uh, enter number one or something. Enter number one, number one, or number one. And then I can say this, do this here, and I can do command, make give it a default value of 23. Right? Yeah. So I can press shift and enter to okay. go to the next line. Okay. And then I can just copy this. Okay. Copy okay. and paste. Okay. Since I am just lazy. Okay. I think code has made me lazy so and I can make this one thirty seven. And then after that the next thing is to try to what console dot log um number constructor right this is number one this is what you said you did plus number two right and then we're able to okay so we have 23 okay we have 37 and then we have 16 and i know that this if i check the type of this, this is a number so that's that's it. it's as simple as that is but i said it like in the last class that what we're supposed to go through is that that type right, of conversion right, right. so did you do a google search or did you i just went through this okay but see when i was trying to see if i could get here um i could change that stuff like that i did not carry it so i remember that um, you said something about when we are deploying the game, like when we use the number, yeah, yeah, and stuff here, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah that this one, yeah. number super structure. So let be equal. So this we call as the name. So it makes it number. So I was just like, okay, so we can actually try to try use it and use it to do quantum form of conversion. Yeah. I think that's brilliant. But when I when I checked it, when I checked when I checked each of them, like number one, yeah. number one, number two. I saw that okay, it was number. Yeah. So type when I did type of number one, yeah. I saw it was integer. Yeah. Type yeah. of number two, I saw it was yeah. integer. So when I now did the type of the result, which it's is the final answer, and I told you on the final. Yeah, it's just like let's say the way I did this console dot log now. You now mm -hmm. did the type of that type console of dot log. Now, yes. Yeah, obviously it's going to give you on the final because I say like console.log is a function okay. that should return something, something but okay. console.log by default is just printing out what you logged okay. it will always return undefined Fine. and then okay. print out your final oh. thing but when oh, we get okay. to functions okay. we'll be able to write functions that return a result okay. and you won't be seeing that okay. undefined okay. again okay. 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 so let's start another thing though another brief thing that we can use to do that conversion is pass int so okay. let me just do a duplication of this change it to number yeah, when i was doing that when you were showing me that i had to now put that this is where i did and then it, of, yeah of it. so i had to put that number one the, the answers i said let answer inside answer uh -huh. inside so as at here now what it will store inside this is undefined okay because console.log is just to print Okay. But you will not save the printed answer. In. You would think it will save the printed inside okay. answer. Okay. But it's not going to do that because it's saying like, I'm just going to print. My work is to print something else. So you could just as well just remove this console.log okay. here. Okay. And then print this value print inside answer. this and then I'll print answer and okay. say console.log answer. Okay. okay. And you're going to say console.log type of answer, answer to give you the type, type of, of the result. Okay. Okay. So, Instead which is log, yeah. at this point, just, just save, the, save the answer inside, inside that variable and then print, and then it, print out. it out. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So, that's it. So, the problem with this screen recording is look at we're just four seconds now, and it's as heavy as 170, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I can, I think I have some ways to, to shrink it down because obviously, I want to send this to her now. I need to be around 400 or 300 megabytes but the only way is 
put it on Google Drive yeah, and then yeah, you know yeah. share and do it. But at least we're able to keep you. Mm, yeah. Though I know for me too, I have interest in recording YouTube yeah, stuff. Too. But like I said, you could just jump to the to say this is the business here. But you must have taught these classes at several grounds. Like I said, like I've been teaching like, coding for like a couple of years now. So you know, constant teaching is you're improving your own teaching capacity mm, exactly. the way you present the content like i said this is the best kind of class i'm taking in a mm. long time too mm. because i've learned over years i've seen people's response to learning i've seen their you know i've seen them so it keeps getting better the more you present the content mm-hmm. till you get to a refined mm. place where you can now standardize the content and say okay everybody can now keep getting this one and I, like I, I also follow people who teach these things too to be able to get the best guys to see the way they present their own content, okay. how they solve a problem, and then how you also can explain a concept. And that's why sometimes I try to give you a reason why you will remember that thing. Mm. To see and call it and hold it to one, you know, one thing and say, okay, why do we need to have three ways of declaring string? Why? Why do I need to do the single quote, the mm. double quote, and the back three? But when you realize each person is coming in to solve a different thing, then you know why, and then you can pay attention, you know. I'm the focus too. And I think alongside Amala chatted me up again and asked the question that uh, why did I overlook HTML and CSS? That it looks as though I assumed that they already know HTML and CSS. I said I didn't have them. I made an assumption that it's costly. But I know why I am ready to pay the cost of that assumption in the sense that even if you don't know at now it's not a problem. Because what I'm trying to build now is I'm trying to build solid JavaScript foundation. And you know, this is our second week rolling in. So it's, it's going to be a little bit, you know, just get that understanding of programming, software, plus, operations, all this language of programming. Then before we now review HTML and CSS. Mm. And then before we now try to merge mm-hmm. the two together. And then will now deal with front-end frameworks because I always talk about front-end frameworks mm-hmm. that I'm also going to talk about them because I, on the longer run if I do this with React now it's going to be lesser than this and it's going to be much much more mm-hmm. easier yeah. and it look more presentable as an app in that context mm-hmm. it looks more presentable as an app in that context because the end goal of all these things are application like I said the evolution from website to web apps I don't know whether I talked about it yeah. where we had websites that were running php mm-hmm. or the back end yeah. and a little bit of javascript put inside mm-hmm. but now we have the web app kind of version where everything is inside one website yeah, yeah. and then you have the interaction happening mm-hmm. and nothing is and no, there's no moving no, no moving from yeah. one place and, and that is the real time you know giving people access to modern facilities and, and stuff so instead of me using number here yeah, i can use pass so there is number dot pass float or pass int which it means that number is the constructor mm-hmm. but there is a static method called pass float yes, okay. that also also pass the meaning of pass in computer science is a form of conversion okay. so it's good you'll be hearing cast or pass that is you're passing the value from a particular format to another, another format. format so when we get to our vs code we'll look at the signature of this pass float okay. so that we also understand how you work mm-hmm. and, and, and so because just change this to pass float here yeah. so and then we still get our we still get our why not use a uh, pass it so passing is because i can't say whether my number is going to be an integer or not okay. so but though these values are integer but if somebody enters if somebody enters so let's okay. say this is pass pass int and I say three point ten three point one zero so it's going to return the integer mm-hmm. part yeah, of that thing exactly. which okay. can be dangerous to some operations mm-hmm. but if we do we just pass float here pass float like you can enter then number, can, number you can enter your decimal and don't forget JavaScript doesn't have integer Mm. what it has is number, number which is combination of integer mm. and floating points yeah so type conversions let's just try to to play around this and see i'm going to be shuffling between vs code and the browser whichever type conversions so over time i formed some of these folders 
because this this looks like a lot of all the folders that that contains basic javascript.info so these are like some of my classes that i've taught before the code i probably used you look at something like this now it has some codes here yeah, so um, it has some codes i've used before which i've kept over time mm. you know i can review it and you know we can keep keep uh, keep using it till till we get um where's type conversions here yeah. type conversion yeah. so, so this is empty because I, i've not done anything probably i've not recorded anything on type conversion before so obviously because we have data types we can convert from one data type to another yeah. and don't forget that there there was still some specific thing we talked about on numbers that number has some specific uh, special numbers Mm -hmm. Infin infinity okay, yeah, minus true. infinity and not a number yeah, not a and i also give you instance of how to generate each of those things like divide by zero yes, yes, divide yes. by something that is not a number mm -hmm. and then uh, all these things so because of that we there would always be a need for you to convert from one type to the other so we have the string conversion the string conversion that is convert something from a string so 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 anything that is in a string version you kind of be we should be able to convert it to what their equivalent in, in string anything else and the basic way you use here that they see is um, using the string constructor the string constructor itself or we use something called the string so we we'll look at this two string and, and look at where they come from. So let's say we have some level of um, boolean now var va, value 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 equals to let's say true. And this is what boolean. And I want to convert the equivalent of the string. Or should I can just say console dot log string of what value, right? I can say control K Q which is going to give me okay, we cannot remove install we can install this back on this I'll do this later so we have true here, but we cannot see whether this true is, is a true boolean or a true, right? Because if I also do, let me duplicate this. Right? I can't differentiate which is which. So yeah, I can just do one, two, yeah, I can do type up here. Then you can see the difference now. See, one is what converted to string, and one is. Did you see the way I did it now? So, the type, the type of inside the console of log. Then I can also duplicate this and use the other method, which is value dot to string. And then I can show you to do this. Yeah. You can also convert using to string. So where does to string comes from? So I don't know. Can you see it? Or is, I should mm. increase it a little bit. Okay. Um, I'm a fan of tiny tiny things. Okay. So we have this here to string. So using the string constructor or using what this to string which is an object uh, which is sorry which is a function or a method now you know you also ask the question that is still impending functions are method okay this is a method that is attached to every variable that you declare to string. which is to string which allows us to be able to convert it to string I want to ask this type of we did now can it be type of into bracket string which is into bracket 
the value something like this yeah, yeah it's, it's permitted okay it's even the safest but for me i think i even know which one works okay okay so it's still the same thing okay yeah. it's just elegance and okay um, number conversion so it's not there's nothing special in the conversion more than what we just did so for number conversion we just you know we just run through it number constructor and you can use either the pass parse int or or pass float i think the stuff I know can do this. So I won't do example on this. So to to convert, comment? convert to to comment it. That's in control forward slash. Okay. Then you have comments so I should also quickly just talk about that. So for comments you have the multi line mm. comments. This is a single comment. This is control. Can I play this thing and continue? Okay. I think it's still recording. Yeah, it's still recording. It's still recording. Yeah, it's still recording. Okay. Uh, I was scared. So for comments, I can do... What did I, I wanted to do something before. Let me share. Okay. I wanted to do something before. Let me share with you. So this is comments. I can do forward slash in the beginning, and which converts the comment. This is a single line comment. This is a single, single line comment, and then this is a multi line comment. Is this still not clear? No, uh, I'm just looking at the type of font. font uh, it looks a little bit cheeky. <laughs> mind, mind us. Though you can set your font and stuff. Okay. But I think it's still high level settings. So your home will bring out a UI. Okay. To bring out this UI. Okay. Right? Okay. But for me, I think I prefer... I prefer the code versions of it. So okay. Mm. Mm, so this is a printer money. Mm. This is the name of the front end. Okay. Mm. Mm, I think if I save this now. Let's change to, to another one. Mm -hmm. I think I like this one too. Depends on. It just depends on the mood. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit thick, bold, and. Mm -hmm. The, the Italy version of all of them is, okay, okay. is uh, depends on well, why you need all these things at times is just the mode of coding sometimes mm. just having them is encourage you to like want to code it in. and depends on coding is mood now you see this color thing so you know your own is still default color so depend on the mode and sometimes coding might not be interesting so you need the level of Mm. Play, play play to play just play. Uh, to just bring bring out the best. So this is you can do examples for this, right? Yes. Or maybe because for the sake of the recording. Mm. But I think I've talked about this. But let me just so we have the value let number one equals to string of ten. Which this is a string of ten, but I need the real value here. So I can now say CLG, CLG, then I can say type of, oh, CLG is controlled as well. Ah, it's me that configure my own to that though. Ah. So you can, you can also configure yours too. So we have something called snippets, snippets, so user snippets. I have lots of snippets I have 
So I have user defined, I have global snippets. So I think I have some global ones. So it depends on depends on your need or yeah, your need at that particular point in time. But snippet just means a simple shortcut that you can just type on. So so maybe bring autocomplete. So let's see JavaScript. even i was not the one that created clg so clg must have come from maybe one package that i installed but all these ones are the ones i created my on myself so when you are within a javascript environment then you can now press them i have ims so ims is import style whatever, whatever, so mm. those are things that it just saves you because obviously i write these things repeatedly mm -hmm. i think i have gq Depends on depends on your our need at time goes on, and um, yeah, queries quer when we get to JavaScript in the browser, query selector or query. Ah, we have query selector here. Yeah. So it depends on ah. depends on the need at time goes on. Though obviously you can Google search many of these things at the I think it's understanding my tool that has brought me to that easy, you know, that easy, easy -ish. So type of this now, then I can do the number constructor here. Yeah? Then automatically change to a number. And then we can, yeah, we can console.log this. Or we can console.log the number itself. Beside it to separate whatever or anything you have inside console.log. So okay. I'm console.logging the type, type of and of then the actual yeah. number. Yeah. So you yeah. can put command beside to to separate that. And then using other methods is I can just look top this to pass float. It still works. I can look top this to command. So yeah, we have yeah, we have this. So, this is now something for us to note. So that's why there are some all some some use cases for us to always always put that back of our mind. String conversion is mostly obvious. If false becomes false null become null so it's always important for us to still remember that if you are converting boolean of false when you convert it to the string version it will be what still false. first well when you convert null null to give you null uh, i'll not even try it let me try undefined undefined the rest will still work so the, the meaning is undefined doesn't have it to string mm. that's why he's complaining mm. cannot read something or something undefined mm. but for every other thing okay. you can convert them easily from you anything any version understand. they have to their string version so which is true this can be uh, this can even be a number because it can be a number it's still going to it's still going to convert down to the right version for you as long as that's what you need so it can be number or true or false or anyone you want to anyone you want to convert so notice this color 
-hmm. It was green before, mm -hmm. the 9000 that color. So this color, <coughs> what this color is saying is the complexity of, yeah, the complexity of this single statement is much. Okay. So there are some that is white. You see white, you see green, you see this color. So, and this is just coca, because this green is by coca running each line in evaluation. So this is a complexity. So problems in programming have level of complexity. That is how difficult it is to like, solve them. So, so this is not a really. So the computer has to like say, okay, is either twelve or true or. So if this one is not true, to check this. If this one is not true, to check this. So when we get to some point, we will talk about truthy and falsy. Yeah, we'll be able to know why this works. So this would be twelve. Because if I still console dot log the string, the string of the value now, it will still be twelve. But let's assume that this is uh, zero. So, so what happened here is it did not consider this. It passed the power down to this. So let's say this is also zero. It passed the power down to false. Do you get what I'm saying now? So if this is also zero, there'll be error. Or now it's saying okay, it's converting it to, to zero. So what was happening initially is zero by nature is a falsy value. Mm -hmm. And zero by nature is a falsy value. But I guess at this junction it doesn't have any choice and it's just converting. But truthy values are like there are every value in JavaScript is truthy. And there are some specific six values that are falsy. Then we get to their their junction and we'll talk about them. So this is this and this and this. Any question? Okay, so these are specific conditions. You know, there are specific conditions for number. That is when you try to do number of undefined to a number, it gives you what? N he hen, not a number. When you try to convert null, it gives you zero. Sorry. Did, should I get you water? When it tries to convert true and false, it gives you one and zero. And when you try to convert string, mm. then the condition is white spaces from the start and end are removed. It, if the remaining string is empty, then it results to zero. Otherwise, the number is read from the string. And then, if the number is not a real number, or a number that the string can, it can understand, it turns it into what? N A N. Like not a number. So this this example, uh, look at this. Uh. So the one that has string white spaces by the side, strip the white spaces off, and take that one two three, and convert it to a particular number. Yeah, so it's, it's still uh, but yeah, because as at this point now, it's a string, but here now is a number. Mm. Because, okay, it because it has converted. It's converted. Then here, it's a number that has a string. But the computer doesn't know what Z is doing in a number. So that's why you have not a number here. Mm. And then true is always one. And false is always. Mm -hmm. so, but that's still uh, just easy, easy, easier to so just copy all of this. And put it. So I can just change my alert to console load. And then everything works. Everything works well. Okay, I want to ask you. Did you highlighted all this together? Yeah, and then how did I do that? Yeah. <laughs> like so I, for numbers the other time so I, I have something that I have. You have this option. It's out on your own system. Okay. So yeah, you see, alt can when you uh, when you press alt and you press the direction key, it drags a particular line moves that line up or down okay can you see that this is yeah. the first one but now okay. it's now the last one okay. so that alt is the one that is doing the dragging okay. of that okay that is when you press alt yeah. and your direction key it drags yeah, yeah, whatever yeah, one you want yeah. to drag now when you press that alt shift and that horse together what it does is it duplicates okay. this unit has duplicated so for me i don't do copy and paste I just duplicate and then I use what I want to use. So that's what your shift and your alt and the downward key. So you can duplicate downward or upward depending on your need. Okay. 
it up or down depending on your need do you get it now for me to create multiple cursors now i have multiple cursors um, multiple cursors Ten, multiple cursors. So this is Alt and your control. It's going to be your own control. Alt and your own control, and then it creates cursor for me on that particular thing. So I can highlight it, bring it to the end, delete whatever I want to delete, and try to. Since I'm trying, like most likely writing the same thing, and then I can. So I can and save more time. Whatever I write, you know. Oh yeah, whatever you write will be duplicated into you see hello. So it's going to be duplicated okay. that much. and those are like the power that this ID kind of comes in built in with. Okay. Uh, yeah, so for you it's going to be halt. So it has they call it they call this things modifier. That is when you're trying to press two, three, four, five keys together to mm. achieve something. So your shift control alt and Windows key, they are modifying one thing or the other, so that's why you have to like press. You know, the first one was just Alt itself, up down. Then we did Shift and Alt to duplicate, and then Control and Alt to create multiple instance of the cursor. But I can also do like the way it is now. This is this now. This is a cursor here. But if I press another cursor here, it comes right. But if I hold my option and press that same cursor it comes in mm. so cursor is like this option or alt is the modifier for options mm -hmm. it's the modifier for cursor do you understand allows us to be able to you know at every junction type in instance for our cursor mm. but you have to understand what you want to do with it because anything you press affect that single okay. single uh, instance of so please ah, note. So does it affect the cross board or maybe the cross where you highlighted? You know? It's just a cross where you highlighted. Okay. Okay. Mm. So look at this condition. Now please note that null and undefined behave differently here. Null becomes zero. Undefined becomes not a number. Even me, I don't have this story in my head. But it's just good to know it. Maybe for interview purposes or whatever purpose you want to have it start. Or and if you are not looking for a job, why should you have it start? You understand? And most mathematical operators perform conversions. We will see that in the next chapter. So we have operations that does conversion or casting or passing behind the ground for us. Then we have Boolean conversion that is convert from any type to the yes, Boolean yeah. context. So mm. for the Boolean context, you see they are also using the Boolean constructor function. In boolean constructor function so yeah that thing i was talking about comes into play it happens it happens in logical operators logical operators is you know we, we was one way we're talking about data types and we talked about boolean we talked about how you get a a, 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 a boolean value you could declare it by say true or false or you can compare to like by using comparison operators where you say three less than seven returns true or returns false and then those are the logical operators that they are talking about here so the conversion rule so behind all this conversion each of them has like their own rule that so for this boolean now it uses the falsy and truthy rule anything that is falsy it turns mm -hmm. them into false so if there is a value like zero which is falsy when you do the boolean conversion it returns it into what into false it turns it into false and when you have um, a truthy value it returns it into what true mm -hmm. so what they're saying is values that are intuitively empty that is like zero empty string null undefined not a number they become what false and the rest becomes true the rest become true the rest become true too so you know like i said i can just copy this and then just carry this along as um, something for us to what to hold on to Just boolean right boolean conversion sorry i'm tired a little that's our that's our our work sort of 
so yeah we could just so you can maybe when you get back home you could just you could just write an example for each of these ones yeah. so by it's just by saying something like this uh, Happens is you could just come here, you know. And we do console dot log into what the first one is zero here. You say boolean or what zero. The boolean constructor. Same boolean constructor. So. A boolean of zero, a boolean of empty string, a boolean of null, a boolean of undefined, undefined. So all of them are what false, and then the rest. So when I, when I say the rest means the rest means anything else I try to convert. Is a word. It's a word is a string. W is a string. This is a anything else. A real number. You know, any other type of thing that you convert will become true. Will become true. So that's just the little behind it. And please take note of this. The string zero is true because it is a string. Yeah. So you have to understand that string zero is what. When you have a string of zero, it's a string, so it's going to convert to true. But when you have empty mm -hmm. string, it's because mm -hmm. it's empty. Or when you have zero, zero it's empty. empty. Do you understand? So that's. Don't inside the string. Like as long as it's empty. Yeah, and it's not It's a string. And summary. So we've talked about each of the conversions. So how do we master these things? It's by doing plenty conversions. Just for the first start, try to convert as much as possible. Three point something, five point something, just for you to you know to understand that mm -hmm. have that idea of what that thing is all about. And then we have uh, the next one is operators. So I'll just brief through these operators. They are not, they are not special. They are not. They are things that you already have an idea of from onset. And I think from there we can. Yeah, we can. No, I should definitely give you something to also work on. So, something to work on. It's thirteen hours. So, here's the map here. So here we have a process. I used to say this basic operators. Okay, so basic operators. So. so yeah, let's let's try to operators. We have like they said now we have unary, binary, and opera. Now when you are coming from computer science stuff, we've done some of these things in. I think compiler construction, that's where we talk about something. Is it compiler construction or automator? It's supposed to be those course, two courses are supposed to where you can, when you write two plus two, two and two, they are operands, and then the plus itself is the operator. Yeah. So, and then you can also have equals to maybe four or something. Uh -huh. Then you can identify the operand. So, what computer does is computer identify this operand and operator, and that's the way compiler. So there's something called AST Explorer. That's AST Explorer. Abstract syntax tree. That's the full meaning of AST. An abstract syntax tree, it is what your compilers know. What they use to run code. Hmm. So for this one, AST you now this is it tries to like help us to see a, a JavaScript. JavaScript thing better now. So if you look at this now, let me highlight this guy now. 
So now it's saying this is a function declaration, and this is the way your compiler now sees it as well. You have function that is this is a function declaration. So this is the way it's registered in that compiler. I say okay, this line it's a function declaration. Then it starts from which line? It ends at which line? Then what is the name? Or what is the name of that function declaration? And so the name is an identifier. So it gives it an identifier. That is an identifier is just the general name for all variables. Then it says okay, it's an identifier. Then that identifier also break down to what its own it has its own details, the line where it is, and its value. So this is the way computer tries to but this abstract uh, syntax tree now gives you a high level of how the computer runs each of the lines of code and then how you as a person can write your own code very well properly and well structured what happened to your leg here is there an accident yeah in the house in yeah, the vehicle I was, I was still very small in the vehicle no it was in the house broken bottle no accident car accident Someone was driving in the compound. Mm. Uh, I was still very small. I think I was about four years. So, well, we were living in a flat building, but a couple of seaters was born in um, face me, I face you kind of house. So, they came there, all the um, community health and all uh, that. They came there for all those immunization. immunization. So, myself, I just left my siblings in the house and I went outside. I wanted to go and see what they were doing. Okay. So, and I was very, very small. You know. So I crossed the road trying to go. I never knew that there was a car trying to start up. Okay. So, I, because I'm not used to crossing the road now. Mm. So, when the car started, I didn't know. So, I was even trying to push the car backward. <laughs> you know, my, mm. little, my little self trying to push the car? force of the car. So, the guy just climbed uh, on right yeah. my leg. That was pretty close to your because you might have never been able to walk again. Yeah. That's pretty close. Very close. And nobody will ever really see it. I still walk up again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just that's <laughs> us. It's just God. Yeah, sure. Our mm -hmm. uncle is, is so small that people really don't know that value of that that portion of mm -hmm. the leg. Because uh, like this have, this yeah. portion of your leg is mm -hmm. what holds the uprightness of the leg. Yeah, exactly. So if it's gone, mm. it's, it's really it's like I was saying. That's that's by the way. So what this does is after seeing the identifier, then we can also close it back. I should be able to close this identifier. So what did you say about the identifier? You said yeah. So this identifier. Let me just try to close it. Okay, this is the function declaration. This is this. Okay. So this identifier now it just shows us the line of where that identifier is. And the line where it ends and what the name of the identifier mm -hmm. that's all so this printed so that's a but this printing should be the name of the function and yeah, so that's the name and so you know they have a general way of just the of storing that variable that holds the function okay. we know it as variable but they now the abstraction that is seeing it as what well. an identifier that is this is something i can anytime i see this identifier then it is this function declaration I'm okay. going to call it. Okay. So which is just the it's, it's just the then the ex, is there an expression? So one can bring any code here to yeah, to just get to an eye level oh. high level of a view of what yeah. happens. So uh, any form of code I think yeah supports a lot of language. Yeah. Try to but this is serious work. People really don't have time for all this. But you know this helps you to understand and learn better. Hmm. It's, it's just it's just I don't know why, but this is computer science too. Because this is an abstract syntax tree you now. This is core computer science requirement now. And so after that, is there an expression false? Is there a generator false? Is there async false? That is this function is at its way is dissecting the features of this function now. Like does it meet all these criteria? Does it have any parameters? No. So if I say let's say it has name now. So you notice that the the params are suddenly added something mm -hmm. called name. name. Uh -huh. So that is that is your understanding. The, so the identifier uh, with the params here is empty. Then the body now. So it will enter the body. You see that by default, as I'm going over it is highlighting that portion. 
So the body of a function starts from this open curly brace to this curly brace. Mm. And so they call it what? Block statement. Mm. So it's a block statement. So that's the name of what the computer used to identify. So block statement, block statement, function declarations, block statements, identifiers, you know, params. Those are specific things. So here, it starts from which line to which line. Because that line is important. The computer just needs that line. It's always very, very important. So, so this is starting from 417 to yeah, 418. So this is 417. This is on line 17. Okay. But this line 17 is, when you check, it's the start of your checking line by line, space okay. by space. Okay. So if you look at this now, we copy this inside the VS code, and VS code, VS code is going to give us a hint of that line properly, because VS code tries to keep. VS code tries to keep. Um, so line four colon whatever whatever. Okay. So when I come here now. Line four. So this is line one, but okay. that colon is twenty two. Oh. So twenty three. Okay. And then line two, colon one, line two, colon okay. two, like that, like that, like that, like that, like that, like that. Okay. Till you get to the last one. So what that one did is, is combine that four hundred? That no, it's not even combined. But that four hundred or something is even counting the space of each one of them. That is all the mm -hmm. rows. Okay. It's counting one row. So it's, instead of this one starting each column fresh, it's just plus the all so the zero to plus all the uh, plus everything together to to give you the high level scope of what so we have so it's also as a body because it's a bl it's a block statement so what is inside that body now it's an expression and that's why i say like when you're learning programming language it's a statement it's a form of communication that turns to paragraph turns to all these things so that expression now let's what is that expression so you go inside the expression and the expression says you see the curly braces is not there again because the college space is not brace is not part of the expression but it's just this single line that is the expression so what does this single line mean now the single line means an expression that starts from this and this and what is the expression itself okay it is a call expression that is that means under expression statement you have several types of expression and so under call expression what do you have you have type you, you have the type of the call expression it starts from which line and which line so it has something called the collie that is something which is on that type of this call expression that is something that is calling something so it has the collie then the collie is so the collie is tips dot for each because mm -hmm. as i i just as a type on the collie you now as a type as a type on this it is uh, this is all of them right the called expression but when when we went inside then the member expression of that collie now is tips dot for each then it also has its own the type of the expression, the line where it is starting from, the line where it, where it is ending. So this will help you to understand how a particular a single line is of code is is, is, is running. Mm. But you know, you would need somebody to first explain to you. You can't just, just come into this place like and this, you know. Exactly. But myself, this is like my maybe twelfth time of coming here. Mm. But I know like I've seen some higher level tutors too that try to come in here, take a snippet of code bringing it here so that you can understand what is happening on that ground and i feel like the day we are able to process what happens on that each line of a code that's the day you learn how to write code mm. and that is not going to happen in one day it's not going to happen in two mm. days mm. it's going to take a long period of time so the more the lines you see and ask questions about the better your understanding of that line you know comes into and then the, the more you know the, when you learn english now the more you can pass your thoughts together look for better way to communicate your thoughts you know and, and, and you know get better at it so this is the um, so what does the member expression contains so it contains objects so what is the object tips is the name of the object mm. then it has a property and that property is called for mm -hmm. each and then because so is it computed it is not computed so if i had put something here yeah, yeah. tips for each is a colleague 
Yeah, tips does for each is a calling. And inside that you have an object. So inside, so, so tips does for each is a calling now. Like it, it's the kind of expression which you refer to as a calling. He's not saying that that tips expression now contains of two major things: tips and for each. Tips is the object. Then it is inside that object that you have that for each. Property. For each is a property on that object. So when we get to object, you would have a better view of what that thing is really his now. So when you look at the property now is for each. So for each is just like also an identifier, a name that somebody gave something, and this is the value. And so it's just just eye level like that. I think. Um, what else? Now after that, for that call expression, the call expression has a calling, right? And an argument. We just talked about the what, the, the first part of it. Mm. Because this is the whole collie, everything is this. Mm. But under that collie, yeah, under that collie, you have what? Under that collie, you have members mm. expression, the member expression, and those this tip dot for each. And under that members expression now, under that members expression is when it breaks down these two and explains to you what these two is. Mm. That's where we're able to see objects and property. Did you get that part? Yeah. And then that means we have this argument, which is still coming from this call. Um, call, and we said this call expression splits it into member, right? Mm. It splits into member and what? Callie and argument. Callie and argument. So it breaks it down. So we've explored all of the callie thing, and so it still tells me and boils down that writing code is still a form of tree. Because it's just one thing linking to one thing, linking to one thing, and then there is this intercommunication. So we can draw the tree of this now. And that's why they call this abstract syntax tree. Don't forget, in the last class, we were able to really look at our code from a syntactic point of view. That mm -hmm. is, look at the syntax of that yeah. thing. And so by the time we understand the syntax, it's you know easy for us to through. pass exactly. And the day you know what to pass through it is when you know when you need that thing. You, you understanding what to pass to it and what it will return will tell you that okay anytime i face this kind of problem then this is the right thing to use mm. anytime i need my user to prompt something okay it is prompt anytime i need confirm somebody to confirm something and i need a value it is confirmed so you know we have that idea based on the syntax understanding that we have of that so this is now another extension of that syntax understanding that is now this is the 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 skeletal structure of what your code as it were the whole of the code that is is now the combination of plenty syntax mm. plenty syntax and then combining them into mm. telling you how this work works so by the time we look at the argument the argument tells you that okay i am a kind of arrow expression arrow function expression mm. under that arrow function expression because you tap on it and then it also goes further and tell us what and higher level detail of what what he himself to the arrow function is doing so it tells you the line in which i am tells you my do i have any identifier do i have expression am i an expression am i a generator am i an async function there was one that i said it was asking about computed or not i mean i, mean, I think it was under this calling just asking whether something is computed so if i think if i put this here now We'll put this here, we'll put this here, we'll put this here. Uh, uh, come on, come on. Come on, come on. So, he's also trying to run this code. And obviously, he's saying, ah, what can I do to make this run? Mm, 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 okay. Can you see his computer now? Initially, the computer was what? Yes. Well, because I just modified my code a little bit. Mm. And why I can modify it? Because me, I know how to turn something into computed. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying now? So, mm. it's, it's, just, it's just good that the basic understanding of what you know is what you'll be able to like relate with each line of code and be able to um, play and write, you know, undo it back to our, our normal dot. And then our computer is, is back at. 
So that's uh, so how does that computer that like yeah it how works it works in another different way that is it means that like it's so, like as computer is running that thing it's expecting you to compute it like mm-hmm. compute on the fly mm-hmm. but like that does means it's static that value that for each is not changing but when I put that that hard there it means that like this inside of this computer is an expression on its own and it's expected to evaluate a particular thing. So be careful. This thing is supposed to evaluate a particular thing. Try computer to try to check the object, which is the parent of that thing. See whether there is an expression that matches what we're expecting, and then it tries to calculate it. And now put the real value that's supposed to be there, and then just place it there. So um, arrow functions. I'm sorry, I had to like go back. So I just needed to like explain that. Then. So you also see that we're also back against another call expression because this also is a kind of function that takes an argument and takes a level of thing. So what happens is code is just repeated processes. But once we understand the process, once it's easy for you to know where that thing is coming in again. So we are back at what? So it's saying like it has two params. So what are the two params? If I open it, identifier one is what tip. And you see that it's highlighted that yellow. Have you seen it? Yeah. And then I close that identifier too. It's assigned what? I. All right. After that, I have the body. Right. I close this. I have the body. The body has what? Call expression. Call expression. Oh, so because we've seen call expression before, mm-hmm. so we understand it to have a member, mm-hmm. and then it to have its own arguments. Mm-hmm. So let's check our member here and see what member has. So member here is what? Member expression starts from this line. Mm-hmm. It has an object property. and property. So what is the object? By mm-hmm. using this console because console. So we don't even need to tap into it by you understanding that structure. And then here is the what? Property the property. And then the computed of this property is going to be what? False. False. Did you get it now? And I really like this. And then we have the argument the to that thing. That is those things that we pass into it. the way those things that we pass inside for each is coming into yeah. play. Do you understand? So yeah. it's really so it's saying that this is a binary what expression. expression. And so let's see what binary expression meant. It's on line this, 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 and this. Then it has the left part and mm-hmm. it has the right part. So that's what yeah, I love this binary expression. You know, we're just about talking about uh, operators yeah. and then we have the unary we have the binary and we have the ternary binary means it contains at least two operand and a single operator okay. ternary means it contains at um, three operands and two operators okay. unary means it contains a single yeah. operator yeah. and an operand oh, okay. and these are high level computer science yeah. because these are the things your compiler used to return the result of your code and this is what we also help us to be able to build our own compiler when we grow in our own career and mm-hmm. being able to you know convert things to quality convert things to expression convert things to whatever need you need to do and then being able to so two plus two is binary two plus two is binary because two and two yeah, right. <laughs> two operands mm-hmm. and one uh-huh. so here so here is just this side and this side okay. as there's a plus sign here and there is this here and there is but this how can here. we achieve tenary without two operands? How can or you achieve, achieve how can we achieve tenary without two operators? How can we achieve tenary? Without two operators. Without I don't get that question. No. You, know, you, you said tenary contains three operands. Three operands and, and two operators. Two operators. Yeah. Okay. Two operators. I was thinking it's yeah. one operator. Oh, it's two. It's two. It okay. must be two. So here we have the first one. And then he said the first one is template literal. Don't forget when we started talking about strings, we talked about that backtick. And another yeah. name for backtick, I don't know whether I mentioned it or I said it that I sometimes I call it inter- I said it does a form of interpolation. Yes. We call it template literal. So it's another name for it. And many of these names are standardized. So many of the engines must see that name as the same thing. Mm. Backtick is the name of that tick, but that process of using that thing itself. It's called the template literal, so that's why here you see you have it named what template literal, and then we tap inside it again. It tells you okay, it contains two expressions, and then this is the first one, 
the first one contains an identifier called hi and then i've not heard this thing before quasis i know it's definitely computer science term so it's most likely computer science term quasis computer science computer science really important for our discourse here, but they call their own courses here. So courses here means um, it has another template element. You know it's different from template literal. Mm. This template element. And then the template element is what? It has to do raw and cooked. Hmm. This is interesting. <laughs> so beautiful. So the raw is steep. The cooked is steep. So that is one. Then it has if it's whether it has a tail or not and then we close this the second one is what then the template element that's the raw and code but this one now has a tail tail means maybe the last value of it or something like that then we have this we have this this is really beautiful and so it has talked about all the things inside this Quoted region. So why it says this one is an identifier? This dollar, this dollar quality braces because we said it's an expression. It will replace it with the value of that high. Now. Can you remember when we were doing our string declaration? Mm -hmm. So that's why it's already seen it as what a particular. And is this already has a value in it? Yeah, this would obviously it's coming from this guy here, this okay. eye here, and it passes down the value to, right. to it. This this guy. Here. So we explore the two courses here. And then the operator in between mm -hmm. them, and which is a plus, then it talks about the right yeah. hand side. So we have also talk about it's a T, and it's an identifier, and so that is everything about this line of code. Wow, so this is it's a long journey. It's a so long journey. two plus two, so which is something simple now. Look at this now two plus two, you expect two plus two to have. Um, obviously, expression, binary expression, two on one side and two on the other side, which is just simple abstract syntax tree. Mm -hmm. But till this is the way computer handle even more complex thing, and I think this is the power in which computer used to solve complex problem. Each thing is already mapped to something. Each expression is mapped to something some as precedence you know like body mass kind of system so mm -hmm. it already knows that okay is this does this two plus two have plus you have brackets here does it have um, parentheses here or something so it knows which one to because if i say this one plus multiply by 10 here so it's expected to first do two plus two or you either do 10 times two and two times Joins and then plus them together depending on mm -hmm. so computer is able to map out the right thing based on that just our bracket that we have we've used here so if you look at this the first one is okay this this two and two inside is binary yeah inside is binary mm -hmm. and then inside that binary again there is another binary this two and this this solution of this okay, and so this is binary this is one this is, this is one. no this is left and right this whole side is one left one and this left is right, right. but when you now enter this one again it's still on that binary, binary where two is what left three. and one right again so that's the way computer breaks down our coding so segmentation and then it knows which one am i supposed to quickly run and which one am i supposed to like wait till we you know we get this so this is this is this inside that binary expression it has two literal mm. which is plus and then it has another right literal again which is 10. so that's the way computer sees it it sees this as binary and it sees this as another binary so which is beautiful paste some javascript here explore your syntax tree created by the chosen parser you will all you will use all the cool new features from es6 and even more so what they are doing is they have several com several JavaScript engines that they are using. Mm -hmm. So these are various versions of JavaScript yeah, engines. So you can see the way an engine okay. relates its own code okay. from another one. Okay. So Tracer like is coming from Google. 
um, I think um, yeah Babylon flow I think I don't know there is one that Google Chrome uses around here but there is TypeScript here there's Exprima you know there's any one of them but it's still the same kind of system but they can now just have a different average it does a little bit of because what they are trying to do is they have mapped this abstract syntax tree to the way those compilers were built mm. because it's, it's important to always be the same thing because or else it will defeat the purpose of creating those things mm. this particular abstract syntax tree and the funny thing about it is obviously it can help us with not just html no any form of language Thing. they don't have python support yet but it's a project that they are working on constantly so they have rust pug php and those bar graphql go language and why it would be difficult to implement for some programming languages depending on their own engine and how they standardize their own engine because it's about standardizing the engine to meet the international standard recognition so you must have you must have binary expression you know you must have something that you, your own machine once you see binary to understand what to do once you see standard any kind of expression once it sees it it knows the right thing mm -hmm. you know to do at those particular points. so this is really beautiful and for real before i used to come here i don't used to understand like the way i'm doing now and which mm. is I don't know. I, I've advanced a little bit. Like you know, I'm also improving, and and I didn't even plan I was going to use this today. Mm -hmm. Before, when I was still young, I still used to prepare for my class. I think recent days I don't have the time to all the energy to to prepare for it. And I still came here. I still I, I was able to like really still understand mm -hmm. what this is doing. Why? Is, and it's just because of that general idea of once you have it, it's there for you to you know to fill in that little little void as as it were. So copy a bigger language plenty lines of code into this place paste it it's still going to be the same thing but this is just going to break it down for us into you see the size of what we're recording I don't know where it is going and i should be able to shrink it down really um i want uh, i want to copy something here there was something that we did here before no okay so i can copy this here then i can just go to the next tab here and then paste it here you know this gives me a good understanding of what is happening with this code so over on each one of them it tells you what is happening prompt is a call expression you obviously understand it has two things it has the curly prompt itself and the argument itself and, you know like that like that so that's I think this is this is beautiful. It has snippets. You can save this snippet maybe for teaching purposes. Mm. It has it has transform. So transform is when we get to some level of trans when we get some level of um when we get some level of code, I would talk about this um Bibel, yes lint, prettier and TS lint as time goes on. So what else have I not explained here? This is the default editor. So the what they are doing is, um, yeah, they are using your Sublime. So they will give you your Sublime sort of your Sublime interface in this section, so that all the keyboard shortcuts you are using in Sublime will be available here. Mm -hmm. And if it's Emax or if it is Vim, anything that you are using in Vim is going to be Vim is like one of the most complicated IDs in the whole of this world always in building a server that's why we are here we are so this is what some people used to write code the way i'm using vs code now they just write their code here hmm. and it's crazy it's powerful like it's mad crazy but before you know it like core call programmers in the 1990 era this is their baby hmm. so some of them can even adjust to this modern era so they still just maintain this there too but even for you see there's a common joke that even to close this editor hmm. a modern programmer cannot close so even if they want to close you will see how to do google search and say how do you close room hmm. how do you close room is like one of the most play, most searched for questions in this world and obviously i think i've, I've learned it a little bit so you can use you can use q and quit uh, corner 
exclamation Q exclamation and then come on escape I can't press escape here yeah, now come on escape so it's always very very difficult to quit if you don't know how to do it but it's always it comes in built in in some some interfaces I think that are VIM of him so this is the V improved version and then you can use if you want to save this right so it's a core old software very very old and you have the V high or the V so whichever one is whichever one one wants to use and it takes commands so you can write commands sequence of commands here Vim itself is like another course to study for anybody who wants to like to use. It doesn't really allow you to use some of these forwards like it has maybe W that is what it's used to move the cursor around. So it will be very complex mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. And so I can imagine like those who wrote code in the holding here they, they really really like suffered, you know, made it a lot of very difficult. So what led us into me exploring AST Explorer is what we're about talking about operators and I need you to like understand operands and operators properly uh -huh. that was what led me into into that you know that exploration and the like so if we go to our VS code here again so you know we've done a bit of talking about this unary yeah, binary yeah, and yeah. so yeah they are trying to explain what an operand means and what an operator is but I think we that should not become an issue for us. So this is unary. No, this is not. This is not unary. Now this one that we are light here. Is unary. Yeah, that is by touching yes. minus to x. X is a variable, but touching minus to x has oh, changed okay. the orientation of what x is. Oh, oh sorry. Equals is an assignment. Equals is an assignment. Yeah. Okay. So then you can now. So here we have x and y and then this is what's binary so you have math operations which is a normal addition mm -hmm. subtraction division and uh, so in javascript when you want to do reminder so when you do five remainder two when you do five divided by two that is what two remainder one so they always need for us to do remainder a lot so percentage is what remainder mm. I think I can't remember what Pascal is again, but let's remember before. And then we have exponent. Exponent is what? Which multiply, power? multiplier, which power. So, so let's like that. So, you know, several. The normal ones are just normal and easy. But remainder is the only one that might be very difficult for you to. So, you have example of remainder here. So here we could just talk about understanding, which is I might not really like write much. Understanding um, operators, operators. So we have op operate op operate. We have operands, operands, and operators. Uh, operations. Understand busy operations or basic operations operators whatever one. so we have operands and this and then under this we also talk about the types of operate the type of operate the type of oper operations yeah i think let's see this is the binary operations we have the binary binary operand operator Okay, is operator. I'm trying to look at them. So, okay. types of operators. Types of operators. So we have unary, binary, and then ternary. And so we explore math operators. Smart operators, and then we have the you know, plus minus.
addition, multiplication, remainder, and then exponentiation. So all these are operators, mathematical operators, and then you know use each and every one of them to do several things. And then for string, you know we've talked about this before. For string, you have string concur. Simulation, string concatenation, yeah. So, well, with plus sign, yeah, uh -huh, with plus sign, so we have string concatenation, so plus sign. So, you have my string, and then you can, you know, you can join them together. And then we have numerical conversion. So, you know, there was a section that talks about you using operators to convert numbers when we we're talking mm -hmm. about conversions. Okay. When we were talking about number conversion, we talked about number constructor and the pass float. But I also mentioned something that you can still use operators. That is, you can use a particular operator to convert something to a string. But say we'll talk about it in the next. So when you look at this now, let me do um, let value equals to me ten naira. But that ten naira is in string. How do I use this as sort a particular value? So let's say let result equals to yeah, 10 plus value plus another 10. Right? Mm. So if I do this now and do CLG of result, and to take you, so you seeing what? So this is is joining, this is string joining. and this is this is concatenating them together. Okay. But I want this to what to be seen as what the number. The number. So the, the first ones that we've talked about is I would have what mm. converted mm. this to number number okay. or pass float or pass int. Okay. I could just do plus here. Okay. So what that plus did was what hmm. automatically converted my value from string hmm. to okay. what to number. to number. So that's what we call a unary using plus to or using an operator to do unary conversion for numbers. Okay, now what is in the case you have a number inside that let value? Yeah. Yes. Inside this place. Uh, can you convert this to string? So oh, it has to be a number conversion. That's what I say like for you to use the plus sign. It, it is done really yeah, it is number, number conversion. conversion. Okay. 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 So it's doing number conversion. So that means you can use this even in forms where people can just mm -hmm. so this would have worked well with that prompt that you guys did. Yeah. Okay. They just attach a plus sign mm -hmm. to prefix it. Mm -hmm. And then it should have done conversion seamlessly. So that kind of thing is called explicit casting that is by that sign that you put it is explicitly changing the type of data for you not implicitly because implicit is you using the number constructor that is you are deliberately converting it yourself but explicit is just by the nature of the operation it converts itself to what you need there are still other ways of doing explicit conversion just just happens because of certain rules that uh, you know that comes into into play so when you want to convert non numbers so yeah now this is boolean and then you want to convert it to what to a number, uh -huh, to a number and then you can just just do something like this still works still works this one so if you put sign this one is a number before and then you now try to put plus before it that's no effect now because it's still number and it's number mm. and positive number when you write one and positive one there's no there's mm. no difference except when you put minus and you're like mm. okay this is uh -huh, this is so you change to plus uh -huh. Abby? so we are where you put this is minus here now and you now put plus here plus yeah. it is too much it's going to be minus, minus two. so what it will this will likely do is this it's just like it did not do anything basically mm, that's what I'm saying. Uh -huh. it did not just do anything but on these guys 
because this is a, a boolean and then it tries to convert that boolean to what to number mm-hmm. and you know conversion of boolean to number is what when it is true yeah, it's it one, one and when it is false it is zero. zero and for this string you have said that when you have numbers when you have string values when you have javascript values that are empty so to say or they are nothing zero empty string yeah. null no, 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 when you uh, try to okay, when you try to do their conversion then let's see here let's see what happens when we put null here zero it doesn't, it's not like it doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything. I'm trying to undefined here. Because it doesn't work for undefined, but it works for null here. Yeah. Yeah. So it works this way. So that is a little bit of that conversion. So it's always easy in this kind of scenario where you have two apples, yeah, okay, okay. three and then you try to add them together it does the concatenation mm. but what you need is what the addition mm-hmm. so this is operator precedence operator operator precedence Precede. precedence so the precedence is the board mass kind of mathematics that the thought was growing up so i think it is bed mass here, yeah. bed mass, bed mass. So brackets, expressions, division, multiplication, um, addition, and subtraction. That is the hierarchy in which those things have come out there. Yeah. So they didn't write it as bed mass here, but they just give gave us like an high level explanation of how. And then we understanding this precedence table. This precedence table is a little bit complex, but let's try to really see if i can really explain this here when you look at assignment assignment takes it has a precedence of 13 unary takes 17 it takes say, um, 17 also it takes 16 it takes 15 it takes division you know what it takes so i feel like this is the order in which they have power that's the way they've arranged them. So as you can see, unary plus has a priority of 17, which is higher than 13. Uh, so that's why this expression now we first convert these apples to what? Ah, so what's that what's that difference between unary plus and addition? Obviously it's different man. The unary is a single one beside this apple. Oh, and okay. this addition is to join Okay. To join those two, two things together. Add those two things together. Okay. Then, so it's just for us understanding the um, the hierarchy, unary minus and plus. Then you have your normal exponentiation, multiplication. So the unary is just plus. So minus in the unary. Yeah. No, unary. You look at this, the unary is. It has a unary plus. And the unary minus, but the unary minus does not convert, okay. it is the unary plus that does conversion of anything you have to a particular number format. Okay, okay, so let me let me list this again out. So, brackets is when you look at this bed mass, you see something about it. Brackets, come on, B here, B here, B is bracket. Um, I think exponentiation. I said expression. Exponentiation. Comma. Then what do we have? Division. D for division. D for division. D for division. And then we have what? M. Multiplication. Oh my God. Then we have e for addition yeah. and then we have subtraction yeah. s for subtraction and so we can also know that just put this at the back of our mind that unary plus unary minus 
and then, then the rest follows. Nine percent I minus exponentiation, multiplication, I likes. So, here <sighs> so there we have. And I should have some messages here. Well. to this later then we have um, yeah assignment operators assignment you've seen assignments in play before it takes what you have on the words right hand side mix it to and save it in the left hand side so and then we have for assignments we have things like we have something called modify in place assignment returns a particular value so assignment operators can be chained that is, you can say. So what they are doing here is what this C is assigned this two plus two. This C is assigned to B, and this B is assigned to what mm. A, and then it goes and goes on, and goes on like that. And then we have the multiply in place. Assignment allows chaining, chaining allows you to modify, do allows you to do something called modify in place so modify in place is now let's say i have let sum equals to two plus two let's say sum is equals to zero here right and i want to do this here so it means i can't really declare this right so this mm -hmm. is what i'm going to do so i want to now do sum Okay. So that this my son. can be written again as sum plus equals two. Mm. So what this means is I've modified this by saying okay, what I want to do is I'm just what adding sum to this two. So that's a modify in place. This is the original thing. Then we can modify it to just remove this sum in place of this first one. So it's called the modify in place. So it has several formats. You can have multiplication. So this is going to change to what? Multiply. Mm. And then you can have then as addition and subtraction. So you can have um, division. You can have subtraction. So you have all of them here. This is division in place. This is subtraction in place. Please don't forget this. This is important as important. So n is two. So you can now do n equals to n plus what? Mm. So what happens here is now the what they are trying to do is they are just yeah, putting two here. So here n is seven. And as at this place, they are now saying that seven multiplied by, by two, two, which is fourteen. Okay. So the final answer here is going to be what? Okay. Fourteen. So this notation can be shortened to what? Plus equals or mm. multiply equals. Mm. And then our answer is 14. Mm -hmm. Please don't forget this thing. I beg you in the name of God. So it is short for modify and assign. Mm -hmm. Modify and assign. So they call it modify in place. And then this is another most very tricky thing that I also like, so like to, I also like to treat. Yes, this is this. So increment and what? Decrement. I think this should be the last thing we're talking about. Here. Okay, then we have this bitwise operator. So we have bitwise, bitwise operator, operator. comma operator. So increment and decrement. So we have the plus plus, and we have the what? The minus minus. Mm. So how do they work? How do they work? So what we have is let count equals to zero. And then we have let count. So we could just say count CLG count plus plus. So this decrement and increment, they still have their own what? They have pre mm. and post. Pre and post. Pre and post. So 
for this is increment now so this is what mm. post now what this does is i try to tell this plus person say increment this thing by one so after year if i see lg of count what has happened to count that's, that's incremented this is very very corny like i say but i hope i can get the right words to pass it so count is zero here yeah, but what this line 46 is incrementing that thing okay, that means it's just incrementing. As well as so this one now number. when it in, uh, exactly it, it just did the operation but it never saved Save the value but okay. as at this place now that value that has changed okay. whereas if i do the pre So the pre would what increase and still save it instantly inside that thing. It's what it increased this okay. thing and saved it inside that thing instantly. Okay. And then you can now still output it and see the saved value. Saved value. Whereas the post would what increase, so not show you, the and then it's until you request for it. Okay. It's corny, tricky. I don't know why it's like that, but it's, it's one of the most difficult things to pass in JavaScript. Hmm. so have you seen the pre and the post now yeah. so i don't know how i'm going to really like explain this again but i, I know that this is zero hmm. but it has happened but it never showed it has happened whereas you go back to this now and do the same thing here take this and put it here instantly i'm increasing myself I have to go out somewhere. Instantly, I'm increasing myself and I'm showing myself as increase. So, the same thing to do their what their minus counterpart. So, which is the decrement. And then we have this, we have this. So, what happened there? It was it mm -hmm. decrement, but it did not show. And mm -hmm. then it did, did this and it showed. Mm -hmm. So that is the decrement, decrement, decrement. That's what increase, uh, increment, and decrement. The word. Let me just duplicate this here. Please, this thing will require you to go through it one more time. And the mm -hmm. best of perfect okay. times. Well, I'll get. I'll follow the video. So you can. Okay. So that that works. So. I think it should be two years. So this is one cursor here. Yeah. And then that cursor here. Yeah. And another cursor here. Yeah. So I can highlight this. That's not what I want to highlight. I need to. Okay. So this is while I with this course right now. Like it requires a level of skill to be able to manipulate it and the like. So this is this is too not what I want. Mm -hmm. So it's easier for me to see just I like. Yeah, they have to move obviously they have to move at the same they have to move in the same direction. That's even going out of this. So shift one, shift two. Let's just do this for me. So this does the increment, and this lower part does the what the decrement. So that is um, this. Then the bitwise stuff here. I've not had any reason in my life to use them, but it's just this and all. yeah. This and okay. I was I use I use this basic and all. But when it comes to exclusive, okay. I've not had any reason to use this. I use this very well. I use this very well. I use not very well. But this shift and right shift, I've not done a software that requires this. So it depends on the requirement of software that I have this. And this comma too, I've not written a software that uses this comma. So, but people use them depending on when you look at this now here is what 
are trying to see a console dot log two uh, one plus two that's three mm -hmm. and then after that they are saying what three plus seven so the idea is it is it picked this it's just like doing something like this or this mm. but the last one has precedence okay. this is some of the common operator is one of the rarest and most unusual operators sometimes it is used for write shorter code so that we know we start, so we need to know it in the order to understand what goes on the common operator allows you to evaluate several expression dividing them by a comma each of the expression is evaluated but only the result of the last command is returned i've not mm -hmm. had any reason to because even me, i'm thinking of why will i want to do something and i don't want to show it mm -hmm. and it's just the last one that we want to have i know there will be cases will be like that but we have not have not run into any case that's what we can't say but they, they would definitely for them to have created it means there must have been a need or a thought, thought. that you know and this is one thing about writing software is Software is all thought encompassing. Thinking about the way somebody is using your product, and then you are trying to look at that into into your into your vision of rationale. And so, I know we've been able to like still make a little bit of progress with this. Let me see this task now. Try to do this task underneath this thing. Okay. So this post and prefix form. And then the assignment results, type conversion, and fixed addition. Just try to do all the tasks underneath. Mm -hmm. Though the answers are there, you can you know, check them. And this is not a rigid software, and you can check the solution if you are finding it difficult. Mm -hmm. But just make sure that you it's you try to good. first understand the question. I think proper understanding of question helps you to know the solution. But if you now cannot, un if you understand the question, and you still cannot find a way to solve it. They look at their own solution. Look at the way they approach it, and you know, be able to write it repeatedly over a particular period of time. Is that definitely no? Uh, let me see. Call you some. Just give me some few minutes. So we have. Just try to do. I think that just um one, two, three, four. Yeah, four. Like this, this is really going to help you a lot mm. to several types of things that like write it down in your phone and see the way it work. Um, yeah, let me let me call it a day from that point. Try the mm. task. The task. I'm coming solve the task at the end of the session. Yep. So we can 